Good evening, YouTube. Uh, so tonight, the purpose of my video is to hopefully help out people who are getting started with vinyl. Uh, wanting to collect, you got a collection from your family member, and you uh, all of a sudden have all these albums, and don't really know where to start. Um, I'll first go into the turntable, and kind of how I recommend, kind of breaking down what everything means, and... Um, you know what I recommend you should start everybody's got a different method or a different uh, theory on collecting or how you should do everything this is very basic um, I've been collecting for about 10 11 years now and I've slowly beefed up my collection beefed up my equipment just very slowly I'm not uh, I don't have anything super high-tech but um, the purpose of this video is to keep it relatively on the the le you know less expensive side uh, but with the quality equipment or quality uh, handling that'll uh, keep your vinyl in good shape uh, for as long as possible, at least until you can kind of develop more or get more money to purchase better equipment. First things first, you're going to need a turntable. A lot of this, the vinyl collecting as a whole, depends on what kind of collector you're going to be. Um, if you're going to just buy... A record every couple of months and you're not going to listen to it that much and it's a very 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 casual um, you plan on being very casual with it you really can buy almost anything it's not going to be a big of a deal yeah they have the Crosley record kind of all-in-one record <clears throat> players out there <clears throat> I only recommend that if it's just like a minimum bare minimum of listening um, uh, because the cartridges that come with those aren't very good and the more you play them the more it's going to wear down your vinyl and if this is an investment that you're putting your heart and money into uh, you want everything to last as long as possible so if you're looking on going beyond that and that's an 80 to 150 dollar purchase just for that record player I, I wouldn't recommend that for the money I would suggest going out and getting something a little bit more uh, with a little bit more bells and whistles on it other than just being able to play 45, 78, or 33s. And I'll explain what all that means if you don't know what that is. Um, this record player I have is an old Techniques Direct Drive automatic SLD3. Um, what that means is the Direct Drive means it's, it's not belt driven. It's got a motor that drives it. <clears throat> um, everything's going to have a debate and well, which really in everything nowadays, but direct drive versus belt drive, um, you know, there's a million different reasons, pros and cons for both. I'm not going to go into that right now. But direct drive just means there's a motor that is making the the platter spin. Uh, belt drive has like a belt, like a pulley system kind of thing, and it just spins and it just rotates the record as well. <clears throat> so that's what that means. Um either or is going to be fine i mean whatever you can whatever you can afford at this point if you're just starting out um <clears throat> but there's a couple of things you're probably not going to know what it means uh, uh first off is if you get a return table you want to make sure that you have a phono preamp one either you're going to have one that's built into the turntable or you're going to need to buy a separate one uh, for instance this player requires one so if i plug this into my stereo um, if my stereo doesn't have one built into it and this doesn't have one built into it, you're not going to hear anything. Or you're going to have to turn the volume up literally all the way and you'll barely, barely, barely hear anything. And that's because you need something to amplify the, the audio coming in. Uh, so you're going to need something that looks like this. And basically, this is this is the one I have. Um, this one was about 40 or $50. Honestly, when I started out, when I got my collection from my parents, um, I got one of these Pile Pro. It's like a $20 phono preamp, and it worked fine. It was quiet. I didn't have any humming, like any feedback. Um, and I, I used that for years, and I just recently purchased this like a year ago or something like that. Um, and this one sounds a little bit better. The quality sounds a little bit better than the other one, but... Again, this is a process that you're going to kind of build on and build on over the years. So don't 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 kill, kill yourself trying to get just all this crazy equipment unless you have the money to do so. Um, this is again just trying to get you the bare minimum to get you up and running with the best kind of bang for your buck. 
but all you do in this case is you just plug in your stereo cables that are going to come out from the turntable into the input here and then you're going to run the output out to your stereo um, if you're again if your stereo has a built-in phono preamp usually it'll have like a phono input a lot of times you won't need to have this this is only if you don't have a built-in phono uh, preamp in the record player and or in your stereo um, so yeah that's what that means if you see that you know that's one thing to look out for also it's going to come with uh, your a lot of turntables uh, older ones especially are going to have a ground wire like this um, and then like in this case I you plug it into this little, little thing here and screw it in uh, it, sometimes if you're just a troubleshooting thing if you're uh, hooking up your turntable and you're getting like a buzzing sound uh, a lot of times it's just your ground wire needs to be plugged in so just make sure that this is plugged in and nice and snug on the uh, phono preamp or your stereo if you have one again built in uh, most stereos are going to have a spot where you can screw it in like that and you just pop it in there and tighten it up um, so that's basically the phono preamp um, another thing to definitely want to make sure is uh, you have a dust cover um, the dust cover is clearly and self-explanatory that it's just there to protect it from dust um, one thing you don't want to do is like if you listen to album is just leave your record sitting on your turntable um, again it's yours to do with what you wish but to prevent um you know getting a lot of dust on your album even with it closed i recommend always putting your stuff back in your sleeve and taking care of it um, not all turntables come with a dust cover um, so if that's the case you'll probably a lot of them some will come with like a cloth or something to put over it but you definitely want to put something over it to prevent the dust from just sitting on top of it as dust does with everything because it'll just get all up in your all up in everything it'll be I mean dust gets everywhere so it'll land here it'll land in the you know inside there it'll land all over your cartridge I mean it just it, it'll just make a home in every little piece and part of your uh, turntable and it'll uh, just eventually make your life hell um, with that being said, with dust covers, um, you're going to want to get yourself kind of a nice way of cleaning records, um, surface cleaning, um, before you play each record, I recommend. I like the, these record cleaners like this, it's got these little bristles on it, and then it's got like a felt pad. And what happens is when my turntable starts spinning right before the needle goes down, you just set it. You just literally, no pressure, you just kind of set it and let it touch the record and it'll be spinning. And you just let it rotate two or three times. And then what will happen is you'll just pull the clean, the, the brush towards you as, uh, you know, as the record's still spinning. And, um it'll pull the dirt off with it. If you just pull it off like this, it's going to just leave, you'll see a, like a line of dirt just literally rotating in a circle and it'll just, it'll just pile up in a line and it'll just sit there. So you just want to make sure you brush it off and you kind of pull it to you. But again, no pressure because it's going to stop your table from, or your platter from spinning if you push it too hard. So you just kind of want to touch it to the surface and just let the weight of the brush itself uh, be the only pressure that's applied. But, um, I like using these kind of brushes. You can get the, I'll, I'll put a link to Sleeve City. That's where I got mine. I really like that one. Um, I also have my other video for the disc washer. This is kind of a classic wet brush um, that uh, people have used for years. And uh, basically what you do with this, and I have a video for this already, but um, just a quick tutorial. This is what the disc washer looks like. Um, you get this fluid right here and you basically apply the fluid like a little bit of a line of fluid like up on uh, up and down this end edge here and then you um, turn this over kind of similar to the last one you see how it has the arrow you're gonna uh, place the wet end of that brush very very gently on the table as it's spinning as the uh, record spinning let it rotate a couple times and then you just this one you'll turn to the dry side without hitting the wood part to the record and then pull it off like the other one um, uh, these newer brushes are 
made not as they're not made as good as they used to be um, I haven't had a lot of success doing that I feel like I get more of a surface clean out of the uh, the other type of brush than this one um, if you have if you happen to have your like an old 70s or 80s one that uh, they had back in the day um, those are way better and you probably have better results with that but if that's all you have uh, you have at your fingertips where you can buy, I know like Half Price Books carries the disc, wa disc washer. Um, I mean, you know, get one. It's something that's better than nothing. But if you uh, if you have the option to get one of these, I recommend getting one of these. Um, so turntable, FM trans, or excuse me, Phono preamp, uh, cleaning your records. That's two key things you really want. Make sure you have a Phono preamp. Make sure you have something to surface clean your records. Um, the turntable itself, uh, again, it all depends on how deep you want to go into this process. If you're just very, very casual, you're not really looking at investing a lot of money into buying records and buying equipment, you know, and you're just very, very casual, you know, a Crosley record player is probably fine. That's probably all you need. Um, but, uh, if you're planning on getting, doing anything more than just being a very, very casual listener, I recommend going after a turntable with a few components like that I'm going to show you here. Um, one thing is make sure you have, you can get a, like, interchangeable, uh, phono cartridge. A lot of the under $100 turntables are going to have a cartridge that's like you usually got a red clip and they're like a couple dollars and they're just really cheap and they're just, they're not good for your vinyl over time. Um, you know, you're, what I like is a cartridge like this one where I can actually change out the cartridge, use different brands, different types. Um, I have a lot of versatility as far as what I want to buy. I can buy... Um, I can buy a really expensive cartridge, I can buy a, uh, a less expensive cartridge, um, and you can kind of play around with it and you get this, you know, eventually you come up with the sound that you like. I'm using a, see this just twists right off like this, I'm using a Shure N97XE I believe it is, and this one costs about, I don't know, $75. I got it for Christmas last year, and I like about this one is it sounds really, really good, but you can also take off just like the needle part of it, and the and the cartridge itself doesn't have to be entirely replaced, so it's like a, instead of having to spend $75, $80 to replace the whole thing, I can spend $45, $50 and just replace the needle as that wears out, uh, usually depending on how much you play, six months to a year that needs to be replaced um, <clears throat> one thing you want as well is you want a lot of versatility on as far as setting up your turntable um, this one has what they call a counterweight um, so you want to be able to uh, adjust the weight of the cartridge so it's applying the right pressure to the album each cartridge uh, for instance my sure is gonna have uh, between a one and a one and a half gram uh, a pressure that's recommending so that's what I'm going to want on that's how I'm going to want to be able to to change this and, and weigh, weigh it out you know to make sure it's the proper weight I do have a video for that uh, look at my other videos there's one to how to adjust that um, so you can go into detail of that but there a lot of those turntables under $100 don't have that option so uh, you basically don't know really how much weight's being pressed on your album, and if it's too much, then it's going to ruin your album. And if it's not enough, it's it can ruin it because then uh, the needle is not pressing in the groove all the way correctly, and it can kind of bounce around or you know jitter a little bit because there's not enough weight on it, and it can just it can just wear down your grooves over time. Um, some features. Um, two to look for is um, like my tone arm will actually I can just push my start stop button and it's automatic and that means that the arm will actually lift itself up go over and then lower itself on the record 
Um, some of them are completely manual where you have to do it all yourself. That's up to you whether or not that's important to you or not. I like the fact that I can just push a button and let it go and I don't have to like do it myself, but it's not to me that's not that big of a deal. Um, I like the fact, and I talk about this in one of my other my pitch of dust video, uh, the pitch I can actually adjust it here. A lot of uh, newer turntables will have like a, a uh, they'll have like a bar that you can uh, raise and lower the pitch. And what that is is that's just how fast the platter is spinning. Um, if you're, you know, a lot of these uh, hundred to hundred dollar under one hundred dollar turntables don't have that option. So if the platter spins too fast or too slow, you're stuck listening to it like that. Whereas in this turntable or a lot of other ones, you can adjust the pitch and it will, um, if it's going too fast, you can adjust it and make it to the right speed. And again, I've got another video showing how to do that. So if you're not sure uh, what that means, go to that video and there's a little tutorial on, give you a little bit of a guide. At least on my turntable, it's, you know, kind of the same for all or similar. So it should be able to help you out. But uh, those are some really key things that I recommend looking for with a turntable. I, when I got my collection, I went on Craigslist, and I know that can be a very, very risky thing, but I found a gentleman who had his this turntable in his closet. It was just sitting in there for 10 years. He was just getting rid of it for 50 bucks, and I got this for 50 bucks. I've been using it for 11 years now or 10 years now, and I love it. It's been a great turntable. Um, so one thing I've learned over the years with collecting records as well as equipment is don't be so quick to jump on just something that's in the store. Um, you might find, do your research, you know, you're, you might find that you can get a, a tur used turntable, uh, something a little bit more older or vintage, has all the bells and whistles on it for the same price as you're going to pay for some rink-a-dink turntable that's in the store that only lets you play three different speeds and that's it. Um, so do your do your math, do your turntable, or do your research, um, because I think you will be surprised what's out there um, and how much you can get, you know, you can get it for. But you definitely want to make sure it works, because um, you don't want to be stuck with a paperweight. So I think that that, I mean, I'm, I'm sure I missed a few <laughs> little things, and if I did, or you have any questions, please let me know, because I would love to, um, I would love to, uh, help you all out um, one of the last thing is um, this uh, this record uh, turntable has an option for 33 inch 45 speed 45s are the smaller like usually the single records they come with this adapter you place the adapter right here and then you place the 45 on there um, it spins faster for the 45s the platter does to play them and there are some uh, 12 inch LPs which are the ones that fill up the whole platter here that will play at 45 speed. Um, that just means you just switch it between 33 and 45. Now this one's going to actually go between the size of the record. So a lot of 45, uh, the 45s are seven inch, or you have a lot of just. Uh, uh, I have a couple of different uh, EPs that come out from bands that have seven inch, and then there's 10 inch size and 12. And what that does is when I adjust this, it tells my tone arm to go further in or further out on the platter depending on what size record I pick so that's always a bonus too. Um, repeats kind of a not all turntables have it if you're not if you have this and you're not sure what it means it just means basically this is gonna be how many times it repeats the uh, the side that you're listening to what will happen is it'll finish the record once it goes in, and in my case, it automatically returns back to the beginning. It'll just start back over again. This will click down one more number from where it was, and it'll play the side over again. But, um, yeah, so again, that's kind of a quick tutorial on um, if you get a turntable or you're not sure what everything is and you're wanting to get yourself set up. Um, I mean, realistically... If you're if you inherited a collection or you're looking into just buying new, um, you know I would say look look to spend at least one hundred and fifty dollars um, for a turntable and the equipment the the brush and the FM or I keep saying FM transmitter <laughs> the phono preamp uh, and the turntable one way or another you combine them if you buy one that's all in one or anything like that uh, one way or another it's going to uh, probably start you out about one fifty. 
Um, again, I'll reiterate that the uh, cartridge versatility is very important because it also helps with sound quality, especially if you're looking to, to rec recording your albums to a digital format. If you get one of those cheap turntables, you're not going to get the same bass. You're not going to get the same, you know, you're just not going to get the same out audio output if you get a cheap cartridge versus uh, a little bit nicer cartridge. Uh, so again, that's very important that um, you have that option to get this. Um, I'll probably do a video soon where I show a little bit on how to install these because uh, it can be a little bit tricky but um, it's pretty simple it's just uh, just you know you got these little wires and stuff you have to connect but uh, I, again I'd definitely go that route if um, if you have the budget for it and you're into uh, collecting one last thing I will do before um, I stop the video is uh, showing you how to handle the vinyl. Um, if you've never held a record before or you wonder why people do certain things with it as far as the way they touch it or hold it, this will maybe hopefully help you. So I'm going to try to Okay. So it's my Velvet Underground album. Um, I usually keep some sort of outer sleeve on the album. This is the cellophane that came in. I just, a lot of times, if it's not a, a gatefold album, when I open them, I'll just kind of slit the end here and I'll open just the end where I just, I can pull the everything out of there, but I don't, I can still leave this on there because I like having that protection um, to keep my, the cover in good shape. Um, it's up to you on how the way you store it. I recommend storing the sleeve inside the um, the uh, the outer sleeve face up meaning the there's going to be a spot where the record pops out like that a lot of people will put it in sideways to where they can just pull out the the vinyl without having to actually pull out the sleeve I used to do that when I first started collecting but I kind of found that they would get dusty still in there, and this is what I'm talking about, where they can just pull the record out like that. I always like taking it out now, keeping it face up in there, and then slide it back in. I just felt like I got more dust for some reason by storing it that way. But when you handle the record, you want to handle it on the outer edge. My fingers are touching literally the edge, and you see how I kind of am holding it like that. Um, you can use your thumb and you know you can touch the center label that's not a big deal but what you don't want to do is put fingerprints and uh, get liquids and anything like that on the actual grooves unless the liquids are for cleaning um, you start getting dust and fingerprints and food particles or whatever that may be on the record it's just going to ruin it uh, over time it's just going to eventually the grooves are going to just get you know corroded uh, dust will attach to, you know, you, you, your fingers are going to get, you know, oil from your skin and everything on it. And over time, like dust is going to attach to that. It just, it, eventually, it's just, it's just going to eventually wear down your albums. When you put these back in the sleeves, you're, you know, very gently slide them back in. You know, don't, you don't want to just shove it back in there. You want to make sure that this is on there before you put it in the record. You just want to treat it very gently. And you don't want to just, you don't want a lot of friction when you're putting your albums up. When you store them, don't stack them on top of each other. So I've got a few albums here. You don't want to do this and just leave them sitting on a table like that. Um, you want to stack them vertically. Let me switch this over here. Stack them up like this. You know, when you I have a shelf that I have them in, and you stack them, and you know they can lean, and that's okay. But they'll support themselves standing up. If you have them stack lean like this, what's going to happen over time is it's going to start warping the vinyl because the weight up here, and the more weight you put, it's just going to eventually, it's just going to warp it. Um, so it's very important that you store them in a, like a room temperature room vertically, not stacked on each other horizontally. 
because uh, if it's too hot, you store them in a garage for too long, the heat can warp the vinyl because it'll loosen it up. But um, there's just so much to caring for these things, and it, again, it can come, very, it can be very overwhelming. Um, but it's one of those things that what makes it, I think that's what kind of part of, partially makes it uh, interesting to um, collect is keeping them in good shape because um, obviously over the years a lot like Band on the Run for instance this is a 40 year old album um, you know trying to find something that's been taken care of for 40 years is pretty rare so it makes it really special when you you be shopping for albums and you find something that's been just handled very well because <clears throat> it can easily be destroyed over time. Um, last thing, and I'll wrap it up, um, buying records. Don't just go out and buy reissued stuff for $25 a hit. Records nowadays, I mean, it's hard to find anything under $20 if you're buying a reissue or a new album um, sealed. Uh, like for instance, this band on a run album. I got this and this, which is Wings Over America. It's a three LP live album by Paul McCartney and Wings. Um, I got these both for fourteen dollars. If I were to go right now and buy Band on the Run's reissue um, that came out not too long ago, I probably paid between twenty-five and forty, depending on what I bought, just for that. And I got an original pressing. Um, in excellent shape plus a live album in excellent shape for half of the price so um, do your research uh, <clears throat> you can go to my video um, that I did the Willie Nelson eBay uh, haul I talk about uh, looking at you know looking at the records and making sure they're in good shape um, you know going through and examining the vinyl I can I do my best to just explain visually how to do that, um, but again it's it's a it's something that you you're gonna learn over time. So uh, don't be intimidated. Go out and buy the records you want to buy. Don't don't just blow all your money on one or two albums. You know, go to a used record store, go to a, a bookstore, and thumb through some of the records and see you know pick up a couple, and you'll probably spend less than twenty dollars you know picking up two, three, four albums instead of buying one and spending $25 on it. So, I mean, I always recommend buy the albums you want to buy first. Um, and if it's something that you really like doing, then just keep buying it. Uh, most bands and artists nowadays release records um, new. So if you have an artist that's got an album coming out, go to their website and find out where you can buy the album on vinyl. A lot of them come with digital downloads, so you can still have a digital copy for your iPod um, and then have the vinyl when you're at home and you want to listen to it on the weekends. But um, if I missed anything or there's something that um, you're starting out and you're not sure about and you want you want to ask a question, please leave a comment. Um, it, it, again, it's pretty overwhelming. It's hard for me to think of every little thing um, because I've been doing this for you know 11 years now, so... Um, I can't quite put myself back to when I first got my inherited collection and remember exactly all the things that was going through my head when I was trying to figure all this out. But um, hopefully I was able to get you in the right direction and point you in the right direction and help you. Um, and um, again, thanks for watching and I hope you all have a good weekend.